from that Ethan Turner interview. A little egg on my face, man. His name's not Turner. Yeah, you really fucked that up. Jesus. Yeah, way to go. You literally just just botched that important. He's not gonna fund my project now. We'll never work in Hollywood again. Billions of dollars. I'm never gonna work in the San Fernando Valley again. God damn, dude. LA Boys for Life. That's what I'm saying. Shout out Ethan for holding down the West with me. <laughs> biggest takeaway. Uh biggest takeaway. Uh I wanna read the book because I've never heard web the term web four before because we're like not even at web three so i want to see yeah because like my thing was like just the, everything he explained was web three to me yeah that's what, when i when i first talked to him that was my impression as well of like own so his web four is owning things like owning your own value and i would still say that would be web three but he does have a point where it's like people are still developing this stuff <laughs> So you could also say that Web3 is just the decoupling of internet from centralized things. And once you have that, then you go on to the next one. But I, I would I would put the digital ownership of, of value still in Web3. Yeah. Like, but I'm sure there's a solid Twitter thread that says, hey, dude, this is Web4 and you guys are lame, dude. You guys heard about Web5? <laughs> it's nuts. It's in your blood. Yo, speaking of that, dude, you want to get this? I have a headline, right? yeah and i and i wrote about it twitter has a really cool newsletter thing where you can oh. like make a newsletter called review i believe r-e-v-u-e -E, when you see that like subscribe button on people's twitter look up john ricker on twitter what's hopping what's popping um but kind of in that same vein of like he was saying that everybody's like impatient my sentiment on this on this newsletter was like there's really cool technology happening happening and this this was with like a some like a bio like a chip that could read temperatures with ultrasounds super tiny ship chip it's a uh, tinier than a, a piece of dust and uh this team from columbia uses ultrasound uh they've done it in mice they can read uh temperature and and some some vitals but what i've been thinking about was like the like i said i've said it on the bot podcast before if you know your metrics of, of your biochemicals and your dopamine and stuff and whatever makes you tick and happy, you can hack that so you can do like just activities that are progressing you towards the goal. And I, some of that sentiment was like, there's really cool technology happening and there's really smart people making this stuff and I can't make it off top myself. <laughs> but it seems like everything is real, real slow going. People, yeah. like all of this stuff has been thought of like in the 50s. And I understand infrastructure and all that, but it's just, you know, there's there's things that I, I feel like America especially is able to innovate faster with technology. And there's other countries doing a lot more stuff and faster. Um, a lot of people are saying you go to other countries and there's a, there's a lot more tech in the country than there is in the United States. But this headline was... Uh, uh, I think so. I think we're doing pretty all right. A lot of people you go around that have traveled, and some people that live there, they they've said there's a there's a ways behind from the U.S. to other countries. Like I what? can't, I don't have any anecdotes myself, but you have past then. Oh yeah, that's right. You can teleport in the London airport. You can just you get in this booth, and it just like takes your molecules Doctor and sends it to the other. Guy. I like Doctor Who. Yeah, it's that. I mean, I was in the airport. And they had a little robot a couple of years ago in San Francisco. And there's been robots other places for like years. It's a dumb little robot. Was it, I was going to ask, was it like a robot that actually helped you get through the airport just faster? Or was it just a novelty? It was just thing? about beer. Yeah. Yeah. It was just, it was just, uh, like, you, you know, that, that smart dog that people had in 2005, the robot dog. Yeah. It, it was that. One? Uh, it was like, yay big. Oh, fuck. Oh, spot or whatever it was called. Yeah, I, I think we brought, it. we brought. That it was up a rich old one for sure. It was, it was a too. little plastic dog, uh, but it was like that. But for like, yo, dude, what kind of, what kind of beer would you like right now, or wine? Which is cool. Talking about products again, that was a big thing too. I've really been racking my head around how you onboard mass people onto blockchain technology. It's just a killer product. That's what I'm saying. No one cares how the internet works. They care they 
what and then that kind of leads into like what do people what do old non-tech savvy people or young non-tech savvy people who are learning or or okay so two things right uh-huh. you have old people non-tech savvy yeah and so that's that category and you have young people who are just like learn not tech savvy but are growing up in it and so they're still kind of like learning technology just like as you do as like a like a, a first grader on a on a computer in 2001 or whatever uh-huh um so those are two categories of like the outskirts easy but still appeals to power users what do you mean that could be a thing too because like so when we're when you're describing a product that's going to bring mass adoption okay i'm thinking immediately of the iphone immediately of facebook so iphone super easy to learn but people that are super into phones still use it because it's a really good phone and you can like you can do some powerful stuff with it facebook pretty easy to learn for old people if you're a power user you can hop into facebook ads do a bunch of stuff you know and those are two products that brought a lot of people first of all online and a lot of people to like the cell phone world warren buffett super old not very tech savvy said something along the lines of like the the iphone is the best product ever created and he said that he, he should have invested in an apple as his biggest regret yeah and now he owns like what two percent of it or something Thank but God. he yeah. he says that uh he doesn't invest in stuff he doesn't understand which i understand like i like i and you kind of we talked about it with like the starbucks thing when you're bringing that up i understand that but also like and and there's that there's that the, the friction like i brought up in the interview portion of there is a, a big like accessibility thing that i didn't see for people before and so there's that but i mean 